Well, with energy prices down more than 70% since their peak in 2014, can the worst oil bust become the next oil boom? Joining me now to discuss Cactus Schroeder, an oil exploration expert and owner of Chisholm Exploration out in West Texas. Welcome back. It's great to see you. I'm glad to be here, Jessica. Good to hear your voice again. Yeah, so last week talked, uh, we talked in April about the state of play then, and obviously a lot has happened since then. Uh, I, I realized that actually you've been taking people on tours. I thought you promised me the first tour uh, over this year, but uh, you did give it to Steve Sugarood, the Daily Wealth uh, editor, friend of uh, both of ours. Um, you told him recently that this is the worst bust you've ever seen, and you have seen a few. So what did you mean by that? Well, I think it's the bus that has done the most damage to the oil and gas infrastructure. I think it's going to be a year to two years before we start getting any kind of um, real traction. Uh, there's there's not a lot of money left in, in Wall, on Wall Street or, 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 or bankers don't particularly like to see us coming in the door. But uh, for those that, that do have some cash saved, I think they're going to find some real bargains. And I think we've already seen that in the market. The oil and gas stocks have, have already, uh, I think they're up, you know, 10, 15, 20% uh, since we bottomed out. We do have a rising popularity in electric vehicles and a sort of global consensus on reducing global uh, carbon emissions. Why is it a good investment for investors then to bet on oil? There are other energy companies out here that are, you know, some of the majors even are turning to solar and wind and some renewable type energy. And it's not gonna be able to create the gap that we that would, would be there if, if Biden were to shut down all these gas cogeneration plants and refineries and, uh, you know, the oil and gas is gonna be a very viable energy source and it's gonna be well over 50% of the energy mix for the next 30 years. How do you assess and how should investors assess when, it, when the right time is to buy into the market? Well, I, I think Steve Sugarroot is, is entirely correct on his thesis. I, I think that uh, you probably need to start now. And, and as you see them rise, you know, continue to add to your, to your uh, stock portfolio. Uh, I personally would, would uh, shy away from independence. The, the majors are able to withstand these bumps within the recovery where oil prices will go back down before they come back up. And, and when they're losing money on their oil production, they're making it up on their oil refining. And so I think the majors would probably be more of the safer bets. And also, uh, you know, some of these baskets of oil stocks where they uh, actually have, you know, four or five producers and a couple of uh, service companies and some midstream companies, uh, those might even be a, a safer bet. Let me just ask you one more question about the kinds of investments uh, that are out there to consider. You mentioned the majors, you kind of alluded to the suppliers and equipment manufacturers, but in the course of a comeback of an industry, um, after the majors, which as you say, can ride out the highs and the lows, what are the next pieces of the oil industry that are investable that come back that we should be thinking about? Well, there, there's always the things that are, are um, ancillary to it. You know, the trucking industry that is, you know, hauling fuel up and down the highways. Uh, you know, Biden, I believe, is going to try to block any kind of pipeline that we want to build over the next four years. And so we're looking at transporting by truck. We can't get the pipelines that we need to, to get it to the refineries or to get it to market. Uh, that might be one. Uh, the uh, uh, the water industry that's so important for the fracking. Uh, there's been new technologies coming out where we're able to take frack water and salt water and convert it into water that we can reuse in frack jobs. So we're not taking so much from the environment. And, and so uh, I think that's a, some of these water companies are or something that needs to be kind of looked into. All right, a couple of other uh, ancillary plays there from Cactus Schroeder, friend of Stansberry Research, a friend of Steve Sugarood, the editor of Daily Wealth. Thanks so much for joining me. It's always good to see you. Thanks again.
And if you'd like to catch up with more Stansbury Research content, please check these social media channels and find us. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. I'm Jessica Stone.